that I have pancreatic cancer. Basically, they said, they said three to three to five months life expectancy. That excitement, really, about what would it be like to see Jesus? What does this mean? Yeah. Um, thanks so much, John, for doing this. Um, I wonder just if we started off by you letting us know kind of where you're up to, uh, what the doctors have said to you. Uh, that yeah. could really yeah. help us fill us in on those details. So, um, you just mentioned to me before that some people might not know exactly what's happening. So I just wanted to say, first of all, I, I'm really sorry if this comes as a, a big shock to some people when I say this. I know many people know, um, but if it is a big shock, you know, I pull up my apologies for the way of, you know, for just breaking this news here. But basically, um, I went to see the doctor and said I have pancreatic cancer. Um, I know something about pancreatic cancer. Uh, sadly, my uh, stepdad, Rob, uh, died of pancreatic cancer not so long ago in the summer. Very fast um, cancer. Um, and not a great cancer to get, really. Um, if any cancer is great to get. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, basically, they said, they said three, to, three to five months life expectancy. Okay. So obviously, that was a, a shock. The yeah. doctor, he was so. Um, who I won't mention his name, but he was a Christian man, and that was wonderful for me. Um, he prayed with me straight away after the diagnosis, which was just fabulous. Um, again, just another, just another small mercy, not a small mercy, just a wonderful touch from the Lord, um, which has been a constant, constant theme day after day. His faithfulness in that way. So that that was that's what happened. I was diagnosed. Um, I, um, I went back to my car. It was a bit surreal. Um, mm. uh, I kind of yeah, just let people know. I think I let I let Sarah know first. I rang her, um, and obviously that was very tough for Sarah to hear. Mm. Um, you know, it was. It was um, in many ways, I felt it's been harder for people to hear than for me. Right. Um, it's been the hard thing. Why do, you, why, do you, that, why do you think it's been harder for people to hear than for, for you? Because you see, I think for me, different types of suffering, Steve, isn't it? Like, and one of the types of suffering I think that I've underestimated in my life is like uh, suffering where you see other people suffer and you suffer. Oh. I was really encouraged to read the email that you sent round to your uh, colleagues at school. So you, you wrote them an email to fill them in on uh, the situation. Yeah. One of the just things that was really um, encouraging in that email, you were just really honest about, like you said, you're a scaredy cat, you don't uh, yeah. a tough cookie, but that you weren't afraid. Um, and yeah. I guess I would have thought that hearing that kind of news from a doctor would be full of fear. Uh, but you said in that email that you weren't afraid. Can you just explain why you didn't feel afraid? How do, how do you account for that? Um, it's God. We've got a great God, haven't we? He, he's, he was real and he's present. And he was with me in that doctor's waiting room. And he's been with me since he took my hand back in 1989. The, the, the reality of his presence changes every situation. Yeah. So a human. From a human perspective, this is, you know, this is just the most shocking news, isn't it? And, yeah. and it is shocking news. But with God at your side, everything's changed. That's a gift the Lord has given me. He's given me his grace to do that. This is not, uh, it's so important to me that people get this. This is nothing to do with me. I know it sounds strange. Yeah. But it's got nothing to do with me. All glory to him. All glory to him, all praise to him. Just um, unpack that. What is it about what the Lord Jesus has done which removes the fear of death? What, you know, what, um, because I, I guess yeah. the kind of holding the hand thing is, is really a helpful thing for God's love and care for us. But what is it yeah. about the gospel which helps you? Well, one of the things that the Lord's led me to over, and obviously these are things I've studied all my life as a Christian, not enough. But one of the things he's led me back to is the book of Romans. 
Okay. Um, it's kind of a technical book, really, uh, of the Bible. It's beautifully written, beautifully argued, powerful, powerful arguments. And what strikes me about that in Romans chapter 3 is that, um, that God is completely just to forgive us our sins because of what Christ has done. Christ has died on the cross in our place. Um, he took the penalty for our sin. And I know he's taken my penalty. He's, um, he's died in my, he died in my place. There's no fear in death. Yeah. No guilt in life. This is the power of Christ in me, but him might have said. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's truth like that. Then there's beautiful, the Bible just seems to be littered with beautiful, beautiful truth and reassuring truth. And the, the moment that you heard in the doctors to, to just now kind of living with this day to day, how, how are the days? What are, what are your energy levels like? What is it? Yeah. That's a, that's a very honest question. It's a good question. So my energy levels um, are up and down, really. Uh, I, um, I've, I've had some pain, uh, which the doctors have you know, really tried to help me to, to control. Mm-hmm. But even, even then, I can see God's mercy, even in the discomfort and the pain, because it has brought out some of the most tender, beautiful times. So I'm going to, with, with my wife, Sarah, um, who, you know, it's been absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, we've like really just literally had to fall into each other's arms and support each other. And for me, and for Sarah with a degree as well, uh, that's been an enormous, okay, this, it's been an enormous, enormous blessing from the Lord. Uh, How have you managed to communicate it to the children, to Rosa and Zachary? Um, so again, um, we, we told them it kind of fairly early on that something was wrong, but we didn't mention cancer, we didn't mention death. All those acts straight away said, are you going to die? And I, 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 we didn't lie to him, but we were gentle, very gentle with him. Um, but more recently to that, um, I took the lead with Sarah to explain to the children that it was cancer. We mentioned the word and we talked about the fact that I was going to die. Um, and that was, you know, that was, again, it's an ongoing conversation. Yeah. I, I, another thing that's been a great help has been reading Wayne Gruden on uh, the Psalms and looking at uh, what steadfast love is and the, the love, God's love of being in love with us. <laughs> I've read C.S. Lewis, um, The Weight of Glory, recently before I had the diagnosis. That's been an enormous source of that excitement, really, about what would it be like to see Jesus? What does this mean? Yeah. yeah. No, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no tongue can tell what God has prepared for those that love him. Yeah. That's exciting. That is, yeah. Yeah. It's harder for people who have been left. I mean, I sit here saying this, and I think Sarah and I think of us. That's the hard job. If I know we we had a call with the elders and you, and you, I think you went round each individual elder and told us to make sure that we invested our lives wisely. But just just tell us, I guess, how a cancer diagnosis like this has given you perspective on what life's about, what, what matters, what's important. It makes me realise, sadly, how much of my life I've wasted. It makes me realise that I've, you know, that I've been lazy and there's been times when I could have, there's been more I could have given of myself, there's been more I could have given financially, uh, selfishness and I uh, just... I look at that and I think that's just you know so sad really. Now, yeah, so that this 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 regret regret there, but not like a regret that's I mean, not not that I'm like the Lord's like regret the Lord's disapproval like that because I know I have His great approval in yeah. Christ, um, but from a human perspective, from my point of view, I feel 
I wish, I wish I'd burnt my life out from you even more, Lord Jesus. And that's what I'd want to say uh, to you would be, Steve, as the pastor of Edinburgh Church, live for Jesus. Don't be discouraged. Do not be afraid. Really there. Guys, God is real. He is a prayer away from you. That was one of the things that struck me the most when I was first converted was I had been wrong. I was an atheist. I got it completely wrong. That God was real. That he was a living reality. And that you could know him personally. Yeah. That's so exciting. It's not that's nothing to be afraid of. I it's not really that's a that's that's a way of stopping you coming to him. If you seek me with all your heart, you'll have to be fine. If we seek him, we find him. Ask and ask and you shall receive. Knock on the door will be opened. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not about our sincerity of faith either. In, 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 that, in that case, it's still all about him. He puts, he does it. He gives the faith even. Yeah. It's so mysterious, isn't it? But at the same time, so beautiful and reassuring that he gives us our faith. Um, for me. And it's amazing, isn't it? How now just. Um coming back to those things now as um, you know you're facing up to death and coming back to the preciousness of the the simplicity and profound yeah it's like comes full circle it really feels like that yeah. like a lot of the things which touched my faith and embedded themselves as seeds in that early, those early days I was even have come back yeah yeah uh, and reminded me it's amazing yeah there's a, a definitely a New Testament theme, isn't there, of never undervaluing our conversion and the miracle of our the miracle of conversion. Yeah. yeah, John, how can we be praying for you uh, in these weeks to come? You know, we want to be uplifting you and the family. How can we be praying? Yeah, yeah. keep praying that the Lord will keep His presence uh, very real to me, and um, pray for His will to be done. Um, um, pray for my family that when I die I might be able to die peacefully die well if that's in the Lord's plan mm. if the Lord permits that mercy that would be that would be good as I said I'm a real scaredy cat so I think about what would it be like when I die what will actually will I have a pain <laughs> usually to have physical pain but then um, I uh, just feel, yeah, just pray for me. That, um, just thank the Lord. And I, that's the other thing I'd say is I've really felt carried by people's prayers. I know people have been praying for me and they've been to me. And I believe the Lord answers prayer. Please, please, please continue to pray for me and cover your prayers. Um, ask our Heavenly Father to sustain me in my faith and to keep me focused on him and to keep me trusting him to the end pray also for my children and my the step my stepmom as well uh, who i'm sharing mark's gospel with have been teaching through mark's gospel with sue and that's been one of the privileges and what you're saying of my life to do that to teach mark to, uh, to talk to children for a long time and yeah that's been wonderful Pray for, for my, my, my Sarah, who I've seen suffer because of this, my diagnosis. Pray for her. Pray that God would unfold her in his arms. Will you, uh, will you, you know, look after my wife and children? I, I know the Lord will anyway, so I'm not with you. John, thank you so much for just your honesty and your clarity. You know, we, we are and we do and we will keep praying for you and, and for the thank family. You. Uh, really grateful. Thank you very much. Thanks, buddy.